I'll preface my comments with the a fact that there that a lot of mathematical economists in the in the U.S. spent a lot of time on the Cambridge controversy. Uh, some of them taking John Robinson's side uh, in this view. Um, but she visited the department, which is kind of a coup, early on. I can't remember exactly when, but a long time ago. And uh, she gave a paper uh, during when she when. After presenting some of her views on, on the capital controversy and other things, she raised the question for us, the audience, the, the students and faculty from the department. Since she had killed the uh, neoclassical production function and the neoclassical growth model, why did we let those people continue to write that stuff? And why in God's name did we let Samuelson write a textbook that was and everybody read, which was proven to be garbage in part by Cambridge people. And it was kind of difficult to explain to her that the UMass Economics Department didn't control, control publication in the United States, <laughs> nor the journals. I mean, she was just, you know, I, I, I have a suspicion that in Britain maybe they do things differently <laughs> than we do here. Maybe the Cambridge people do. So she was a fascinating woman. I was the chairman at the time, and Pam and I invited her down to a dinner in, in this house, uh, along with some department dignitaries, maybe an administrator, I don't remember. So there's seven or eight of us sitting around a table, and uh, I consider myself the person who's responsible for seeing that, that Joan enjoys herself and that the conversation rolls and so on. So Joan is sitting there kind of just looking out the window or like her mind is at some other place. And I'm trying to engage her in conversation and can't. So this goes on and on. I ask her questions to give me one word answers. Um, it's getting very nerve wracking. I mean, I'm getting very stressed. I probably started to perspire. <laughs> A half hour goes by. Joan is clearly bored out of her mind. <laughs> and has nothing at all. She finds none of us interesting in any way. And being from uh, the, the intellectual elite that ruled the world for a long period of time, she found no reason why she should pre pretend that this was not the case. So she's sitting, she's sitting next to Pam. And Pam asks her uh, do you, about her family. And so she and Pam start to chat about her family. And, Pam asks you if she has grandchildren, and she says, oh, yes, and, and they're, off they go for 45 minutes. <laughs> Basically, Joan is lit up and babbling about her family and about her kids, having a wonderful time talking to Pam <laughs> about her grandchildren. And, and uh, I don't know what happened after that, but I felt so relieved that, you know, <laughs> that, that she had, I was, I was about to commit suicide. Um, <laughs> So the, the main things I have to say about Joan Robinson was um, she has a strange view of publication and uh, she's a tough lady to get involved in a conversation she doesn't want to be involved.